There are some videos on YouTube that will forever stand the test of time, uploads that remain the definitive classics of the early days on the site, the original viral videos of YouTube. These clips have a certain spirit that you just don't see anymore, and a scroll down the playlist of these OG viral hits will certainly bring up that feeling of nostalgia. However, there's one name that continuously shows up in this list of the original viral videos, a certain Frenchman by the name of Remy Gaillard. One of the founding fathers of YouTube pranks and a legend across the site. The beloved French comedian's presence on the internet spans three decades and across all social platforms, his videos have gained a whopping three billion views, making him the most watched prankster of all time. Yet despite his huge popularity and countless classic viral videos, not much is known about Remy and his story, certainly not in the English-speaking territories. While Remy rarely uploads to the site these days and has moved on to other ventures such as politics and animal rights, the reality is that the story goes a little deeper than that. In a controversial turn of events, it would turn out that Remy's content may not have been as original as we all thought. So in this documentary, we're going to take a look at one of the rare untold stories on YouTube of how Remy Gaillard went to war with the French media and how the accusations that were levelled against him around stealing content may have caused him to abandon the site. So let's take a trip back in time, over 20 years ago to 1999, long before the concept of YouTube was even conceived. In order to connect to the internet, this was the sound that would accompany you to the World Wide Web, and websites back then looked very different to what we see today. Our story begins in Montpellier, France. A young Frenchman named Rémy Gaillard had just lost his job working as a shoe salesman. After finding his parents' video camera and with lots of spare time on his hands, he started filming comedy skits and practical public jokes with friends. Gradually, they built up a large amount of videos over the next couple of years, and as the dot-com boom began to build, Remy saw a chance to showcase his humour to a larger audience. In 2001, he set up his very own website titled namporterkey.com, which translates to English as anybody.com. Remy's style of content would fit into the hidden camera genre, and around the late 90s and early 2000s, there was an abundance of these types of shows on television. With his website giving him a bigger platform, Remy would take this opportunity to cement his name in internet folklore. In 2002, his journey to internet fame would truly begin and would see him featured on French national television. In the video set at the 2002 Coupe de France final between Lorient and Bastia, Remy would run onto the pitch in Lorient colours where he evaded security and celebrated with the winning team. Nous sommes à la finale, Lorient Bastia, finale de la Coupe de France. Ça y est, le match est terminé. Notre ami Remy est dans les tribunes, il a enfilé un maillot qui n'est même pas le bon de l'équipe de Lorient. Et il va se glisser au milieu des joueurs. Personne ne va s'en apercevoir. Vous allez le voir apparaître sur votre écran. C'est lui. Il est là au milieu des joueurs. Et il va aller serrer la main au président de la République. Il descend sur le terrain. Il passe les contrôles de sécurité. Regardez, il a des baskets. On devrait s'en apercevoir. Personne ne s'en aperçoit. Il est là. Voilà, il danse avec les autres joueurs qui le tiennent dans ses bras en se disant, tiens, un remplaçant qu'on ne connaissait pas. Le prennent pour un joueur, et qu'est-ce qui va se passer après cette petite hall-là C'est qu'il signe des autographes. Il va même signer des autographes, génial. Et il va signer des autographes à la fin du match. De la part de n'importe qui. Il marque n'importe <rire> qui en plus. Il signe n'importe qui. Il signe n'importe qui sur les ballons, et ça euh, n'empêche, voilà. Comme quoi, avec du culot, hein, on peut faire vraiment n'importe quoi. Bravo Rémi. Ouais, C'est génial. A video the likes of which had never been seen before, the amazing confidence and cheekiness of Remy to even try this made him an immediate fan favourite across the internet. These types of videos where Remy would pretend to be a sportsman would become a recurring character at other sporting events. In one instance, he dressed up as a cyclist on the Tour de France circuit and was able to jump in on an interview with the professional athletes while it was being recorded for television. In another video, he was able to make his way onto a rugby pitch dressed as a Montpellier player while the match was being broadcast live on a French sports channel. He was able to fool the opposing team and officials for a short period of time before eventually running away with the match ball while being chased by security. Finally, on a live Eurosport broadcast, Remy managed to disguise himself as part of the French national volleyball team during the World Championships. 
In this internet classic, Remy stood in the player's lineup at the start of the match, singing the French national anthem before eventually being ushered off the court. As Remy's reputation was growing online, so was another platform, YouTube. In 2007, he joined the site and set up a channel named NQTV, which would later be renamed to Remy Gaillard. He would gradually upload his back catalogue of videos to the site, and with eight years' worth of content behind him, he had plenty to post. Videos that would eventually go on to become legendary were uploaded to his channel between 2007 and 2008. While growth on the channel was initially slow, due to the ever-expanding presence of YouTube across the globe, people started to stand up and notice Remy's hilarious videos. TV segments featuring Remy and his videos were broadcast across several different countries, from England, Switzerland and Germany, and even as far-reaching as Japan. While TV and news channels had reported on specific YouTube videos in the past, this was one of the first examples of broadcasters making a whole feature around an individual creator as opposed to just one specific viral video. It was here that Remy Gaillard's reputation truly became known around the world. The only reason I make these videos is so I can be my own boss. I decide what I want to do myself, when I get up in the morning and when I go to bed at night. No one tells me what to do. I do what I like, and above all, I have fun doing it. With a large amount of media attention around Remy in 2008, he would take this opportunity and certainly not disappoint. Over the next six months, he would post two comedy sketches that would go on to become some of the most recognizable and loved videos to ever be uploaded to YouTube. His Mario Kart video was more like something out of a crazy Japanese game show, and as of 2020, it sits on 76 million views. His next video would follow in the same footsteps of mimicking an old Japanese game, and this time, it would be Pac-Man. In the video, Remy and his friends dress up as characters from the game and chase each other around a French supermarket while they cause mayhem. The sound effects and general craziness of the video made for a winning formula, and it's now possibly considered Remy's defining video on the site and the one that most people would recognize him for. As of today, that video sits on 72 million views. From there on out, Remy became a household name on the site, and by 2010, he was in the top 100 most subscribed YouTube channels in the world. His videos were loved by a huge part of the internet, however, not everyone felt the same. Remy's name had popped up briefly in a British news article in August of 2010, written by English comedian Dom Jolly. The article was titled, I am the victim of a dastardly art heist. The article was about how Jolly had started to notice examples of TV shows recreating his original comedy sketches overseas. At the end of the article, in a short paragraph, he goes on to talk about how he'd been sent clips of a French comedian that had been stealing his work. He was quoted as saying, Clips started to come in of a Frenchman called Remy Gaillard, who has also been stealing a lot of my original ideas and recreating them to popular internet acclaim. He even had a go at my favourite sketch ever, the snail crossing the road. Some of Gaillard's sketches are original and very funny, so I have slightly less beef with him, but it seems that our continental cousins are slightly lacking in original comedy output. While nothing more happened with Dom Jolly and Remy Gaillard after the article was published, it would turn out to be the calm before the storm, as the two would go head to head in a very public feud a few years down the line. Remy's star continued to rise, and by 2012, he'd surpassed 1 billion views on the channel. He signed a contract to star in a film which would be titled WTF. Unfortunately, as history shows us, YouTube films always flop, and as predicted, the film was not well received, nor did it fare well in French cinemas, and was largely disappointing. Only a month after the disappointment of his movie, Remy released a video that sparked outrage around the world. On March 28th of 2014, a video titled Free Sex was uploaded to his channel. In what would seem to be an updated version of a previous video he made from around 2006 titled The Shop of Love, Remy pretends to simulate intercourse in public 
with unsuspecting women. Despite gaining millions of views and likes in a matter of days, he was accused of glorifying sexual abuse with the video. French TV presenter Audrey Pulvar described the video as disgusting and unfunny, and a former French health minister said that Remy was guilty of glorifying rape. While a look back on the video shows it to be in poor taste, Remy hit back at the criticism and responded on his Facebook page. He said, FYI, 100% of the women in the video that's controversial have agreed to its broadcast. Thank you, therefore, for allowing these women the right to think, the right to have their image as they see it, Thank you for respecting their free will, their freedom, their humour, and their joy of living. The public's perception of Remy in France as a result of the video had started to change slightly. From here on out, many of his videos revolved around animal rights, a cause close to his heart. He would make humans and animals swap positions in several videos, showcasing satire around the way humans treat animals. In one example, Remy made a video to help fundraise for a local animal shelter and spent 87 hours locked in a cage while raising 200,000 euros. As a result of his actions, over 200 animals were also adopted, a huge success for a great cause. However, Remy would soon be in the public eye once again, but for controversial reasons. On the 17th of July, 2017, he uploaded a video called Tourists. The video would go on to spark major backlash for Remy amongst the world media. In the clip, he hires a small two-seater plane and flies a banner over a French beach that's popular among tourists. The banner would read, Go Effing Home Tourists, accompanied with Remy's initials and a love heart. The same unwelcome message was repeated in Spanish and French for the people on the beach to see. As a result of the stunt, it forced the town's mayor to apologise to the tourists for the banner and the video. He tweeted out saying, Insulting tourists who have chosen this beach by plane. This is Remy Gaillard's last attempt to make a buzz. Pity. There wasn't much redemption for Remy in this situation. However, he did turn the whole controversy round by saying it was fate he carried out the stunt because it inadvertently helped a sick beachgoer receive medical help. Et en fait, je suis content parce que le destin fait que si j'avais pas fait ma connerie aujourd'hui, ils auraient pas été là eux. Et en plus, t'es une touriste. Non, mais y a pas de merci. Mais en plus, t'es une touriste parce que tu viens de Paris. Et tu sais quoi Ça me fait kiffer. Je vais te faire un bisou. The incident once again surrounded Remy in controversy, something that he clearly wasn't afraid of. But controversy was just round the corner once again. However, this time, the accusations aimed at Remy threatened to destroy his legacy and reputation. A French YouTube channel called Copy Comic, which is dedicated to exposing French comedians for stealing and plagiarising other comedians' content, was about to upload an expose on Remy. In a controversial and surprising twist, it would turn out many of Remy's most famous and recognisable pranks were seemingly stolen and were not his original ideas. In the Copy Comic video, it shows how Remy had taken many sketches from Dom Jolly, the English comedian that I mentioned earlier that had accused Remy of small-scale plagiarism in 2010. For those who aren't aware, Dom Jolly is a comedian and writer that was the star of a British hidden camera show called Trigger Happy TV. It was shot in 1999 and aired for two and a half seasons between 2000 and 2003. It was hugely successful and went on to have a further two more mini-series made in 2016 and will always be remembered for its legendary signature character. In the Copy Comic video, it reveals that around 12 of Remy's pranks, some of which are his most popular, are exactly the same and have been plagiarised from Trigger Happy TV. As a result of the video, many articles were published accusing Remy of stealing original ideas, and alongside this, some French TV programmes even discuss the issues live on air. On top of that, it started a bitter public feud online between Dom Jolly and Remy Gaillard. I decided to reach out to Dom Jolly to find out exactly what happened. Hi Dom, thanks very much for, uh, for joining me on the call today. 
Um, so as you're aware, the documentary that I'm making is about Remy Gaillard, and we've gotten to the point uh, in the timeline where the copy comic video has just come out. So I wanted to talk to you a bit about what happened there and your interactions with Remy Gaillard. Yeah, I mean, I'd had no interest. I'd been sort of told by people and people had shown me things he'd done in the past uh, and he'd name checked me on a TV show once. Um, but I liked a lot of his stuff, but I had seen a couple of things that, you know, were like, wow, okay. I mean, that literally has just copied mine almost shot for shot. And then uh, out of the blue, suddenly I get, I think it was a DM or in my Twitter, I can't remember what it was in, uh, from Remy Gaillard saying, hey, how you doing? And I was like, oh, that's weird. You know, like I've never heard from him in 16 years or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he says, how are you doing? Uh, wondering if you're up for a collab, you know, collaboration. And I was like, it's a bit weird. Like that's out of the blue. And I don't really do pranks anymore. I'm a travel writer. Um, but I thought, yeah, well, I mean, I'd like to meet him anyway. And then suddenly I got contacted by these people called Copy Comic. And they showed me this video they'd made putting my stuff right next to Remy's. I mean, it was much more than I thought. And it was much more kind of industrial theft, really, than I realized. And then the, they said, this is going out. We're going to release this to the, the press. And I said, well, fine. You know, it's, I mean, there's nothing, it was nothing to do with me. The thing got released. And then Remy's defense, which I read about, was he said, oh, what are you talking about? No, we're mates. Me and Dom are mates. And we're doing a collaboration even. He'd realized, he'd obviously heard this thing was coming out. And uh, he thought, shit, I need some sort of alibi. And so he'd like contacted me out of the blue, you know, asked for this collaboration and then use that as a kind of, how can I nick his stuff? I mean, we're mates, we're collaborating together. The, the copy comic video, of course, had several different examples. And as you say, you know, if there was just one or two, then okay, maybe you could get away with it. But it, it seemed like there was a huge amount of plagiarism. And in that copy comic video, I believe there were over 12 examples, some of his biggest videos, which showed yeah. they, were, they were basically copy and pasted from Trigger Happy TV. I know that the feud went back and forth on Twitter quite a lot. And there was, um, there was a post you made on Facebook where you, you mentioned you were seeking legal advice. What exactly happened there? Well, what annoyed me is I, when I found out what he'd done, you know, that he'd gone to this press conference and said, oh, you know, uh, we're mates and stuff. That really irritated me. He then started all this stuff going on about how I'd nicked off Buster Keaton or whatever. And so I said, right, well, I'm going to have a look into legal action because if you're going to behave, I had no interest in it at all, genuinely, in the sense of, I was like, you know, what's done is done. But when he started sort of kicking off, I thought, well, you know what, I'm going to look into legal action. And this French lawyer rang me up and we had a couple of meetings and actually it was, there was quite a lot of grounds for doing stuff. But in the end, it just got so, the complications of what I'd have to do of dates and getting all my stuff in order. I just like, I, I write books. I just didn't want a massive legal fight. So in the end, I let, I let it go. Because it, it's not about that. You know, like I really like Remy. I think things that Remy Gaillard's done has been really funny. But I'm just like, dude, you just nicked some stuff off me directly. And you've got massive amounts of hits and probably money from it. And you just need to say thank you very much or, you know, give me a nod. And that's what irritated me and the sneakiness of his, his approach afterwards. But, you know, yeah. I suppose that's showbiz. Well, yeah. Dom, it's been lovely. Thank you very much for your time today. I really appreciate yeah, cheers it. Cheers for that. Cheers. So a really interesting chat seemingly shows that Remy was aware he was about to get caught red-handed and tried to turn the story around to protect his public image by claiming to the French media that him and Dom Jolly were friends. Evidently, this wasn't the case. Their Twitter and Facebook feud continued until Remy eventually addressed the accusations one week later in a video uploaded to all of his socials titled F the Media. Uh, la semaine dernière, vous m'avez accusé de, de plagiat. J'aurais volé, j'aurais pompé des idées à un type en Angleterre. Et, et le mec en Angleterre, il l'a vu, hein, il va m'attaquer, il l'a dit. Et je vais vous expliquer pourquoi je vous emmerde. Ces con, je devrais pas me justifier, mais, mais j'ai quand même envie de vous répondre. Il se trouve que moi-même, je me fais pomper mes, euh, mes, mes idées de caméra cachée, et ça dans le monde entier, et depuis toujours. Alors, 
c'est peut-être des coïncidences et c'est d'ailleurs pour ça que je ferme ma gueule et, euh, et, et j'ai jamais chalé, j'en ai jamais parlé sur mes réseaux sociaux. En fait, si j'ai bien compris, je suis accusé d'avoir volé une dizaine de, de blagues à un mec en Angleterre alors que ça fait 20 ans que je fais ça et, euh, et j'ai fait peut-être 200 vidéos, je sais pas combien d'idées j'ai réalisées et là, vous venez m'épingler pour, pour trois conneries. Mais putain, excusez-moi, j'ai pas attendu euh, après l'anglais pour faire des vannes dans des, dans des ascenseurs. Since that video was uploaded nearly three years ago, Remy has only posted six videos, three of which were montages of his old pranks, and one was a slightly out of character sponsored video where he gives cash away to people on the streets. That means that in the last three years, Remy Gaillard has only posted two of his normal prank videos to his channel, and the last upload was over nine months ago. So while we can't say for sure, it would seem the whole situation exposing him for stealing content was the defining factor that led Remy Gaillard to call it a day uploading prank videos to YouTube. Remy's video addressing the situation deflected from the accusations leveled against him by showing that he was also the victim of content thievery. And while this may have been the case, It's sad to say that after researching this video, I've found other examples of stolen ideas that Remy has taken and recreated for his channel. For those in England and Australia, you may remember a program from 2005 called Balls of Steel. In Balls of Steel, there was a character called the Annoying Devil. Now in these clips, side by side, you can see a few sketches from that show was certainly in Remy's mind when he was making his videos. There was also another character from Balls of Steel called Nedge, and in one episode of the show, Nedge performed a scene called Big Stranger Rodeo. You see a big stranger, you jump on them like it's a rodeo. You've got to stay off ground for as long as possible. When you've fallen off, leg it. In an unlisted video on Remy's channel from 2008, he made a sponsored video with the drink company Orangina. The resulting video was completely copy and pasted once again from Balls of Steel. Even the music and intro are very similar. This video has nearly 4 million views, and as it was sponsored, it would mean that Remy would have likely made money from the idea that wasn't originally his. It is of course possible that the company fronting the production may have paid for a license to use this sketch, but it's yet another example of Remy reproducing other people's work. So herein lies the problem. While many view this as perhaps trivial, and Remy himself even played down the severity of it in his response video, the reality is when you look at other examples of content theft across the internet, the reaction is slightly different. When Amy Schumer was caught stealing jokes, the internet turned on her and the public perception of Amy Schumer as a result is now generally negative. Another example would be in the YouTube community, Morgs was called out for copying Mr. Beast's videos on a regular basis and many criticized him for this as well. Many of you watching are likely smaller YouTubers, so it's worth considering this. If you posted a video and a large creator stole your idea, and recreated it to popular internet acclaim and got millions of views and ad revenue out of it, the chances are you would not be pleased. Theft is theft. It doesn't matter if you steal an idea from a tech company to make a product or if you steal a creative idea from another comedian. If you make money from that idea, that is considered stealing or plagiarism. Remy has certainly taken many of these original ideas from other people and monetized them, making large amounts of money in the process. While Remy is without a doubt a victim of content theft himself, as he's shown, it still raises the question as to whether his actions can be deemed acceptable. So to bring this video to a conclusion, Many outside of France were most likely unaware of the controversy surrounding Remy Gaillard, and while it certainly tarnishes his reputation and legacy, he will still remain a legend of YouTube. You would struggle to find another channel that houses so many classic videos on the site, and I think it's here that Remy is relatively unmatched. While there is a large amount of evidence of stolen content, the majority of videos on his channels are original ideas. The Mario Kart and Pac-Man videos were genius and without a shadow of a doubt are classics of the internet. 
With 1.8 billion views on YouTube, it puts Remy in the top three most viewed prank channels of all time behind Human TV and Prank vs Prank. However, you would have to say that Remy is a class above those two. So while the general attitude in France towards him turns sour quite quickly, he still has a large loyal fan base that view him as the greatest internet comedian to have ever graced our screens. It would seem that Remy has now moved on from YouTube to other ventures that are closer to his heart. A recent move into politics was unexpected as he ran for the mayor of Montpellier, and he also does a huge amount for animal rights, something he isn't often praised for and probably should be. Without a doubt, he has brought a huge amount of joy and laughter to the internet over the years and provided us with some of the greatest comedy videos on the web. He will more than likely be considered as one of the all-time greats of the site, but given what we now know about his numerous videos being stolen ideas, it certainly tarnishes his legacy greatly, and it begs the question as to how many other videos of Remy's may not be his original ideas. That's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, please check out some of my other videos, and thanks very much for watching, and please don't subscribe because I probably won't make one of these videos again.